Bojo. Animiki Kiwizan Dishnikash. Dotem Moscow Dotem. Hello. My name is Jeff Ward. And my ancestral name is Thunderbird Boy. My clan is the Bear Clan. I'm a visitor uh, I'm to these Lekwungen territories, and I acknowledge the Squamalt and Songhees peoples for allowing us to be here today. I'm uh, originally from Manitoba. On my father's side, I'm Ojibwe and Métis. And on my mother's side, my uh, settler heritage is Ukrainian um, and English. Um, I'm here to talk to you about a brand new and exciting way to think about innovation, the latest and the greatest, and it's only been around for 10,000 years. <laughs> Indigenous peoples from coast to coast to coast are the original innovators, inventors, and entrepreneurs on these lands. And it's why we start events like this with a territory acknowledgement. It's just a simple, straightforward way to acknowledge those that came before us and to be mindful that people have been living and thriving here for millennia. And what does it take for a people to survive and thrive that long? Innovation. I think there are still some that think of Indigenous people as a thing of the past, or maybe they don't associate the word invention or inventor with Indigenous peoples. And that is just totally preposterous and quite harmful. I'm going to show you just a few uh, examples of some Indigenous innovations that I think uh, you may already know about or maybe you might uh, be interested in. Some parents in the room might be familiar with some new age parenting concepts and techniques such as attachment parenting or baby wearing, co-sleeping, swaddling, that sort of thing. Well, uh, my ancestors have been doing that for a long time. So <laughs> this is uh, a Tuckanagan. So a Tuckanagan is used to, to carry babies. A uh, baby goes in here and is carried around. And this area here is lined with uh, plant fibers, mosses, that sort of thing, and it's uh, used as a disposable diaper. That's right, folks, we invented the disposable <laughs> diaper too. <laughs> yeah, and so um, the plant fibers and the moss uh, were antiseptic, antibacterial in nature, and were such uh, that the baby would not, uh, would prevent diaper rash, keeping baby minty, fresh, and clean. <laughs> Oh look, here's a picture of my son in his Tuckanagan, this Tuckanagan, in fact. And uh, he wouldn't come up here today because he doesn't fit it. He's uh, taller than his mother, so. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you can get uh, MEC. They have their version of the baby carrier today, except the disposable moss uh, bag diapers are not included. <laughs> the kayak, invented and named by the Inuit, was designed for transportation and for hunting. It's very maneuverable, very fast with its uh, double-bladed paddle. And today, kayaking in recent years has been one of the fastest growing water sports in the world. Lacrosse, uh, invented by First Nations, played by the Iroquois, among others, uh, was probably uh, Canada's oldest uh, you know, uh, team sport. And uh, it was played for, uh, for entertainment, for health, for sport. And uh, many nations actually use it as a diplomatic tool to uh, settle conflicts. Today, of course, lacrosse is Canada's uh, national, official national summer sport. And many believe that uh, it was the precursor to our beloved hockey. When it comes to medicines, our healers had things such as uh, pain relievers, digestion aids, and even things that would help you get over the common cold. In fact, when I get sick, I still make rat root tea. It tastes awful, but it works. <laughs> Buckley's already had the trademark to that one, though. Uh, willow bark tea uh, was prepared and made um, for pain relief, and it has the same active ingredient as what is uh, now synthesized in uh, medicines like aspirin. Our pine needle teas, rich with vitamin C, actually helped cure scurvy in newcomers to these lands. So nature provided us whatever we needed to heal ourselves, and our pharmacies were open 24-7. <laughs> so those are just a few examples of some indigenous innovations and inventions, and millions of people are, are still enjoying today. And what does it take these nations to create these? And it is through a unique worldview. So how did Indigenous people come up with these particular ones when 
well, they could have just as conceivably come up with any other iteration. And that is through indigenous ways of knowing and being that maybe are different than uh, Western worldview. I mentioned at the beginning that uh, I'm mixed uh, indigenous and European ancestry. So this is a sort of thing that uh, I think about um, a lot. Um, so I'm just going to share, um, and even just reconciling sort of like the two worlds. So um, I'm going to share with you just a few and hi highlight maybe just a few differences between worldview. Um, indigenous people see the world largely uh, through uh, spirituality, whereas in the Western world, we're very, you know, things need to be measured, only things that we can see and, you know, explain through science. And, um, you know, even uh, in recent years, there's been tons of studies where science is validating uh, indigenous spiritual practices. Uh, in Western uh, worldview, uh, time is, is very linear, right? So we have uh, demonstrated through things like the calendar. So time is broken up into days, months, years, and time is uh, compartmentalized into, you know, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds sort of thing. Uh, indigenous worldview, we see time as uh, very cyclical and measured through things like seasons or even moon phases. One big difference is how silence is valued in communication. Are we getting uncomfortable yet? <laughs> How many of you just wondered if I had forgotten the rest of my speech? <laughs> well, when we have extended periods of silence in, in Western uh, communication, um, we tend to want to fill that space with, with something, right? Or we wonder, is something wrong with this person? Uh, indigenous worldview uh, in cultures and communities, silence is totally an okay way to show respect and share space with, with that person. Um, indigenous, indigenous people see the natural world as more important, important than the human world, or at least see them interconnected. Um, so just a quick thought experiment here. If um, all the plants and animals just suddenly disappeared, humans were not around for much longer. We're not doing too well. You remove people, humans, from the, from the world like that, plants and animals, doing just fine. And in fact, <laughs> probably thriving without our impact. In mainstream world, uh, the more wealth you accumulate, uh, the more status uh, we give people or the more status you gain. Indigenous worldview, totally opposite. The more you have, the more you give away. And this was demonstrated through gift-giving ceremonies like uh, giveaways or in the potlatch. Now, these ceremonies were outright banned, made illegal in this country. Uh, you would get thrown in jail for practicing these uh, traditions if you were an indigenous person. So. Um, you know, imagine being thrown in jail for giving gifts away at Christmas. Well, in fact, a lot of Indigenous people uh, would hold their gift-giving ceremonies around Christmas time as sort of a, a loophole. But still, there were several recorded arrests. It's only through the strength and resilience of those Indigenous people who kept these traditions alive that they, these now uh, continue to happen today. Uh, for example, the potlatch ban was only lifted in 1951. One indigenous uh, traditional values framework is the seven teachings or the seven sacred teachings, uh, seven grandfather teachings. And um, there are love, respect, courage, honesty, wisdom, humility, and truth. And many indigenous people hold these as a, a value these as um, a, a key to a successful and well-balanced uh, life. Um, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and many indigenous organizations adopt these values. Uh, pictured here is uh, the, uh, the seven flames that represent uh, each of these uh, seven teachings. At Anemiki Indigenous Technology, we've adopted these teachings into how we work and how we work as a, a social enterprise. Uh, we literally adopted love in our company, and I'm not sure how many people uh, can say that, and it's something um, I'm really, really proud of. Um, when uh, I was taught, uh, when you're trying to remember these teachings, the one or the two that you're sort of forgetting or having a hard time uh, to remember, are uh, uh, the ones that you need uh, to work on. And as I was preparing these slides, for me, uh, courage was one that, <laughs> and I just thought, okay, I have to mention that. And um, yeah, so it's taking a lot of courage for me to even be here because I, I don't see myself as an expert on just everything indigenous. and. Uh, it, even as I learn about my own culture. So my hope here is to just plant a seed in your hearts that hopefully um, help you think about Indigenous people and in, in the world of innovation just a little bit differently. 
And to, uh, to help you share that message, uh, we have a gift for you. Um, it is a zipper tie. It's uh, uh, seven beads on each side, uh, seven beads representing each of the teachings, and uh, two strands uh, of uh, representing two, two groups coming together in reconciliation. And we'll give those to you at the break for those of you who are here in the audience. So as the world moves from a resource-based economies to a knowledge-based economy, uh, in the innovation world, so many different frameworks are being uh, created. And it's why I, people just love frameworks. Uh, heck, I love frameworks. It's why we've adopted a traditional indigenous framework at our company. Uh, but there are um, a lot of uh, really interesting uh, frameworks out there. One I'd like to just briefly talk about is B Corp. So this is a framework for social enterprises. And it's uh, guidelines and metrics uh, for organizations and businesses to sort of uh, good wholesome business practices to help people, uh, businesses improve their environmental and social impact. So uh, I was told about this certification. Uh, a friend told me, uh, you know, you, you're an ind indigenous entrepreneur, you should check this out. There seems to be a lot of crossover. So I did, and I went through the rigorous uh, assessment, and B Corp assigned us this passing score um, on the first try with sort of no changes to, to our, our company. And um, it was sort of validating uh, to uh, think about how, like I never thought about why or how us, uh, you know, I started my business or why other Indigenous entrepreneurs start the business. So B Corp um, gave uh, me the language and uh, to be able to explain to others how we operate as a social enterprise. So after we got our B Corp certification, I was excitedly um, talking to uh, my family. I'm like, yeah, we're certified B Corp and we're social enterprise and all stuff. And my dad looked at me and said, we had no choice. It was how you were raised. <laughs> and so um, then we went on to talk about how this country was founded on uh, entrepreneurship, right, through the fur trade and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, as soon as our people uh, could recognize that we could sell things to the settlers, uh, we were in business and exporting our stuff globally. <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad said, and all of those uh, entrepreneurs are B Corp as well, because it, it benefited our entire community. So indigenous people were not a thing of the past. We're still the original innovators, inventors, and entrepreneurs on these traditional territories. And we have a lot to offer the world of innovation. Uh, it's only through the resilience of those that came before us that many of us are still here. Because let's face it, if the government was successful in what it had set out to do, I would not be standing here with you today. We have a young, up-and-coming generation of indigenous innovators. And as I hope I've shown you here today, uh, we have a lot to offer. Uh, we're the youngest and fastest growing demographic. Um, I can guarantee that in your industry or in your area of expertise that there are indigenous innovators making a huge, huge impact. I know this because uh, in our work, uh, I get to work with uh, so many um, bright hearts and bright minds that are just making a huge impact in so many areas. So my challenge for all of you here is to find these innovators, hear their voices, amplify their voices, and find out what innovation can look like from an Indigenous perspective. You and our country will be more successful for it. Thank you. Miigwech. <laughs>